Open Your Eyes is brought to you by the Belize Bank, our country, your bank, and Smart, bringing people together. Start your morning right. I am William Neal. And I'm Marlene Cuellar. And thank you for joining us this morning. On a very tranquil Tuesday. Yes. The weather has been beautiful, especially early mornings. Very windy. Of course, there were some rains last night. I don't know if it was the same in the city. At least in Ladyville, it was that way. Yeah, I heard it. I, I saw a couple of droplets. So, <laughs> so you slept through, through the rain. Yeah, that's, that's what I would expect to do. Okay, well, let's jump into our weather, and we have Mr. Tench on the line. Good, good morning, morning, Mr. Tench. Hey, good morning, William and Marlene. How are you today? I'm fine, thank you. Beautiful weather. It's very windy. Right. Mm -hmm. And, of course, there was some uh, rain last night, at least in Ladyville. Right. How right. much of the country was southern covered by showers? Southern and central parts of the country also. Ah, okay. A lot more, lot more in the south. Okay. Okay. So, what is the weather looking like for today for the country? Okay, we're looking at um, generally sunny skies with cloudy periods today. Uh, partly cloudy skies tonight. Showers will be generally isolated. Okay. And uh, winds out of the east to southeast at 10 to 20 knots. Sea conditions choppy to moderate. And the outlook through to Thursday morning, partly cloudy skies with isolated showers and thunderstorms. Okay. And uh, our extended forecast? The out okay. Uh, well, <laughs> the outlook through to Thursday morning, partly cloudy skies with isolated showers. But if you want to, if you're asking me beyond Thursday, um, uh, pretty much the same weather going into Friday. Okay. Uh, at the start of the weekend, it looks like we could have a, a increase in showers and thunderstorms. Mm -hmm. mm. for southern Belize. So it will be a rainy weekend? Um, a little bit more rain is likely on the weekend, at okay. the start of the weekend. I and mostly in the south. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Tinch, obviously uh, we're in the hurricane season, so is there anything that we should be monitoring at this time? Nothing at this time, um, Marlene. Okay. Well, thank you very much for that update. You're welcome. You have a great, great day. day. There, and you, there you have it, or weather in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. Uh, but let's keep the show moving and uh, move into our second order of housekeeping, which means our eye opener for today, the 11th of June, 2013. And it goes like this. To be who you are and become what you're capable of is the only goal worth living. Life is not hopping from one mountain top to another because there's a valley between. At times, the valley is a job you hate but need to feed the family. The valley might be a failing or toxic relationship. The valley could be a child who goes astray or a friend who betrays you. The valley could be an illness or the death of a loved one. The valley is dark, bleak, ugly and frightening. But there is a value in the valley. When you are in the value, valley, you begin to muster the strength and power buried deep within you. In the valley, you begin to think, pray, and tap into your incredibly divine self. The valley gives you a time to rest, to heal, to rejuvenate your being. It is an opportunity to look up, to see, and remember those powerful mountain climbers who made it before you, your grandmother, your hero, even yourself. 
You have been in the valley before. Remember what you did, how you got up and out. Let the thoughts and memories of that success be the rope you use to pull yourself up. I am taking time to learn the valley, the value of the valley. <laughs> You want to yeah. spend more time in the valley? Go right ahead. <laughs> Just don't take me with you. <laughs> no, I love, I love, that is one of my favorite um, mm. eye openers. Simply because it has to do with the fact that we don't appreciate the, val the value of struggle. <laughs> I'm talking, mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, and there's so much more that we can do with life if we just dare. And I, the opening quote in itself is to, say, to become the best possible you. That's the only goal worth living. And it means that you may have to do things that are scary even for you. And I think that's where it talks about the value of the valley. You know, consistently that you're going to be faced with challenges. You're going to have to leave people you're going to have to leave sometimes even family and loved ones behind because you're on a mission, a mission of being uh, fully uh, fulfilled as an individual. And you can always come back for people. That's the beautiful part about it. Yeah. You, you may have to part ways for a time being, but you can also come back for them. And some people are simply not on your speed. Yep. I mean, that's just one of the things you have to embrace. But I think uh, what you touched on a little bit earlier in terms of being able to understand the value of disappointments um, and things going wrong in your life. Uh, you know, they usually say the sweet is not as sweet if you don't know the taste of the bitter. Um, and I think that uh, it's not something that you can teach to somebody. I think we, we usually kind of just have that aha moment somewhere in our lives where you're like, you know what? All those negative things, all those things that I, I trudged my way through that I felt was just uh, the lowest point in my life helped me to enjoy um, the peaks even more. And I think that that's one of the things that's uh, an incredibly important lesson. What I really loved in the eye-opener was um, the reference to looking at people who've made it before, uh, whether it's grandparents or ancestors or yourself. Because sometimes we don't even realize that we've uh, been quite strong and quite courageous in our own actions, but we just haven't been able to tap into it at a particular moment. And um, it, it's part of like that self-talk uh, self process where you're like, I know I can do this. I know, you know, I've done it before. And it's true, but it's believing it and, and using that as your way to get ahead. Yeah, and just for me to wrap up, you know, um, take the rainy days and know that the sun will come and that you'll also bloom. That's a perfect example for us here. When it's hot, we want rain. When it's rain, we want sun. So, uh, you know, you, you one usually helps you to appreciate the other and it's essentially the same. All right. Well, jumping into our show for today, in our first segment, we're going to be looking at the Wind Energy Project. And of course, we're going to be joined by uh, representatives from Bell Trade along with some foreign investors to talk about what's the potential for wind. Perfect day to do that given mm -hmm. the conditions we have outside. All right, and of course uh, the buzz this week is all about the primary school examinations. Um, we know that the results came out at the end of last week and as we traditionally do we have the top achiever joining us on the show and she's going to be joined uh, by her principal um, to be able to discuss a little bit of how she was able to make this achievement and, and what it means for them and the school. And then we're going to be wrapping up our show for today with a segment with uh, the Salvation Army, the Blee Salvation Army. They have a number of summer programs that they'll be having um, and they wanted to talk a little bit about how you can get involved. So that's going to be near the end of the show. But what we're going to do is go ahead and take a first break and when we come back we'll get right into it. So stay tuned. The revised national gender policy envisions a society in which all men and women, boys and girls, are able to achieve their full potential through the enjoyment of their human rights. Where all citizens live together in mutual respect, 
dignity and harmony and have equal access to services and resources that promote their economic, social, political and cultural development. The policy focuses on five priority areas, health, education and skills training, wealth and employment generation, violence producing conditions and power and decision making. It has links to and complements other national commitments and national development strategies. Among them, Horizon 2030, the National Poverty Elimination Strategy and Action Plan, the Sexual and Reproductive Health Policy, the National Gender-Based Violence Plan of Action, the Belize Education Sector Strategy, and the National Plan of Action for Children and Adolescents, along with the National Strategic Plan on HIV and AIDS. The policy builds on the past achievements of the first gender policy, which was launched in 2002, and supports the scaling up of programs and services, which support the full participation of women and men, family strengthening, respect for diversity, and gender equality. Read the revised national gender policy. It has something for every woman, man, and child. Find it online at nationalwomenscommission.org. Hey there. Hey, Boo Boo. That's missing you. Oh, okay. Don't you miss me too? Yeah, you know I do. So say it. Actually, I wanted to tell you something. I've been thinking about it and I think we should take a break. I think we should break. take a break. And I think break. we should take a break. What? What's that credit? At a loss for words, this is definitely an SOS moment. But don't sweat it. Smart's got your back. Use the call me feature. What you want now? You asked me to call you. You want to break up? No, baby. Yeah, I, I just want to have credit. I was going to say we should take a break from school. And just go on a trip. You know I love you, babe. I love you too, Pookie. Smart. Bringing people together. Join Belize national football team as they compete at the CONCACAF Gold Cup for the first time. Belize Bank can get you there. One lucky customer will win a trip for two to see Team Belize play their opening game against Team USA on July 9th. For every 50 Belize dollars you spend using your Belize Bank credit cards, you'll be automatically entered to win. Customers who apply for and use a new Belize Bank credit card will also be entered to win. Swipe your Belize Bank credit card and win. Be a part of Belize's football history. Offer ends June 25th, 2013. Some conditions apply. The Belize Bank, our country, your bank. Official sponsor of the national football team. Cover Drive urges you to get tested. The scariest part about HIV testing is the needle. It's your life that matters. Forget the stigma, know your status. Having an AIDS-free generation is within our grasp. Make sure your friends get tested and make sure you get tested. Friday, June 28th is Regional HIV Testing Day when the Caribbean Broadcast Media Partnership in association with Scotiabank, Handcap and your local health department open these testing centers offering totally confidential HIV testing and counseling. Thousands do it every year. If you haven't been tested before, do it for the first time. If you haven't had an HIV test before, do it again to keep a check on your status. The more people who get tested, the sooner we'll get to zero. Our generation has the power to create an HIV-free generation. Know your status, get tested. Get tested. Get tested. Get tested. And welcome back. It's now 14 minutes away from 7 o'clock and as promised before the break, we're sitting down to talk about the Wind Energy Project in Belize. And joining us for this conversation, we have directors from the Belize Wind Energy Limited, Frick the Mayor and Boris Mansfeld. I'll get the names right. <laughs> and um. finally, uh, Belgian investor uh, Stefan De Wert. Perfect. All right. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to the show. Good morning. Good morning. Now, let's talk a little bit about uh, where did the idea come from to actually uh, 
develop a wind project in Belize? Yeah, well, um, Boris and I are um, living in, in Belize. We're uh, down in Placencia, I'm, uh, active in the real estate mm -hmm. business and uh, project development. And um, I know I had two partners. I am come from Belgium, from Europe, and I had two partners that I've been working with a long time in, in, in the real estate as well, who shifted a lot of activities in the energy sector over the, over the last decade. Mm -hmm. And so Stefan and Jeroen, who is somewhere in, in, in the back, didn't go on the <laughs> show today. Um, and when I moved to Belize a few years ago, um, you know, a lot of things were happening in the energy market. It was mm -hmm. all over the news. There were, um, you know, there was a nationalization. There was um, the, 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 the prices were going up. Mm -hmm. So a lot of things changed in the whole energy market. And so. We were talking about it all the time. We said, hey, maybe, you know, it, it's also a business opportunity. Uh, we started investigating very slowly in the background um, for about two years. We did our homework, you know, not, not, in, the, not in the picture and um, started communicating with my two previous partners from Europe and seeing what the possibilities were. And um, renewable energy was, you know, Becoming more and more efficient, you hear it all over the world. Energy, renewable energy conventions, yeah. new en renewable energy conferences. Um, so a lot of things are happening, and so we thought, you know, we had definitely have to investigate the potential for Belize. Now, Frick, let's 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 uh, help us to understand the equation. How did you think Belize and wind energy? Well, I mean, I've been living here for coming here for about twenty over twenty years mm -hmm. now, so I've been coming to Belize for a long time. And there's always been the opportunity here, I think, for alternative energy sources, mm -hmm. especially with wind, because every time I come here, it's always, it's usually windy, like it is today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and like Frick had mentioned, we started talking about the opportunity to help out the economy here, as well as, as the country in general, with supplying extra uh, energy sources. Mm -hmm. And as Frick had mentioned, there's always been a shortage here. Prices have been going up for many years. There's always been, you know, a little, uh, the public's always been upset every time we announce uh, price increases in Belize. So we thought it would be a great opportunity to, to you know, to help, to, to help out as well as do a new business opportunity. Yeah. And, no, uh, sorry. Go yeah, ahead. no, go ahead. No, I, I wanted to say, to ask a question because something that Frick said very early on triggered something in my mind's eye. We've been talking about this enabling environment and, uh, you know, uh, trying to attract foreign investors, but being a, an investor who's living in Belize, and we always try to assess what is the climate and how people perceive it. Despite uh, living in Belize and going through all, because you mentioned the nationalizations and everything else that happened, how did that uh, you know, uh, impact the process for you or lengthen um, at least you know, the, the, the period before you made a final decision? Yeah, I think that the, the timing was very crucial. Um, I think a lot of people in the past have been talking, oh, you know, there's a lot of wind in Belize. We heard the stories before that there a lot of people go around and, and say, oh, you know, there must be potential, there must be potential. But yeah, in Belize, you, you, you definitely have to be persistent, you know, and, and, and try to find the way. Because also, what, what the difference is, is things like that haven't been done before. So wherever you go, there's no rules or regulation around it. You can go to lands department and say, hey, what are the rules for a building permit for a solar park or a wind turbine? Well, I mean, it's never been done before, so you don't get any answer. So you have to really, you know, build it all up step by step, step by step. It, 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 it's, you know, that's why it took so much time. And there was also a lot of turbulence in that market. Mm -hmm. um, and I think now with the new government that says also they have the, the, the Ministry of Energy now, so there's really a focus that they have set, um, you know, they have set a plan for the energy market and that all helps a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we believe that, that, you know, there was that nationalization and there was some talk about um, it hindering international investments, but we've been, we've been real confident in the government uh, with the current administration and we've been, you know, we, we think there's a very positive market here for investments. And um, we've continued to move forward. We've been studying the project now for a couple of years, and we think it's a very good environment. And there's other things we've invested in personally in the country. So we're very confident in Belize in general. That's a great, a great business opportunity here and a great market for investing. Now, Stefan, let, let's hear from you in terms of uh, how you became involved in the project and, and why it was of particular interest to you. 
as uh, uh, Frick told you already, we know each other since more than a decade. Mm -hmm. He moved into Belize. He said perhaps there are some opportunities there. So one year ago we started the investment together with uh, the, the, the investigation together with uh, Boris and, and Frick and our engineers and our companions uh, who are in Belgium, Yves and, and Ivo and especially uh, Jeroen. Mm -hmm. um, our first impressions were good. Uh, then we tried to look at some locations who might be interesting. So last week we were here together with our engineering team and our impressions are in fact confirmed. We have a good feeling uh, that something must be possible. We don't promise anything because we need to investigate more. Yeah. We, we didn't have enough data. You need a year long of data, of wind measurements. Um, so we think we have a good impression. We think it looks positive. It looks positive. Now, let me ask you, because uh, if we think solar energy, obviously, that's, that's easier to measure. We can see how much uh, exposure we have to the yeah. sun. What are the elements that are necessary to, to be able to develop a wind farm? Well, there's, well, there's, well, definitely, there's well, definitely more than more wind. I know yeah, wind, yeah, there's definitely more than <laughs> but wind how, now. I mean, what speed and... Yeah, yes. we, have to, we have to measure, uh, yeah. we, we obtained a lot of data over the last year from other sources that have studied wind in Belize before, mm -hmm. meteorological department, as well as BTL towers. Well, we've obtained a lot of information, but it's not extremely accurate, and there's a lot of uh, variability in the data. So we really, in, before we make a serious $212 million investment in the first phase of the project, we need to do our own study. And so it's critical that we study the wind, and we're talking about measuring every second for, for a long period of time, for a year. Mm -hmm. But uh, we can make a very solid decision after just six months of, of studying the data. But there's more to it than just the wind. We need accessibility. Mm -hmm. if, we have a, if we find the best location for the strongest wind, let's say in, 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 uh, up in the mountains, but the closest grid is, is 20 miles away, you're looking at an investment of about 20 miles of power lines over yeah, the mountains yeah. to that point. So then you have additional investment. Even though BEL may pay for that, it eventually gets pushed onto the consumer. So that's all going to be into the come into the price. So there's accessibility to the grid, infrastructure, substations, the size of the line that you connect to. The line might be too small. You have to upgrade the line. So there's a lot of factors besides just how much wind we have. So it's a very, very detailed due diligence and feasibility, and that's what we also have been um, trying to learn the people or, or you know, or, or try to, to, to teach even, you know, the, the ministries mm -hmm. ab about it, um, that how, how it works. It's not just about, okay, there's a good strong wind. It's about how stable is that wind. Mm -hmm. um, because if you have high speed winds and dead periods, high speed winds, it has a two very big impact on, on, on the very fragile, small electricity network we have in Belize. Mm -hmm. And so all that has to be discussed and, and researched with the engineers of BL. It's also about, like Boris said, accessibility. Those turbines are huge, you know. So um, the harbor of Belize, my, Belize City might be even way too small to bring in all, all those large pieces. Um, so yeah, that, that's all the thing. It's really the total package that we have to investigate. It's not the finding only the perfect location, but it's, you know, what's the cost to, to make it operational at that location. Now, when you're looking at the feasibility of such a project, uh, you know, you also have uh, detractors. Mm -hmm. What has been the kind of uh, on the ground kind of sentiment that you've gotten from people? I know most people complain more about it being an eyesore more than yeah. anything else. But have you done any kind of uh, feeling out of public sentiment as whether there'd be some support or, or not? We've done some, but I mean, uh, I think everybody's very favorable. Um, one advantage that Belize has over a lot of other countries, especially in Europe where, um, where Stefan comes from, there you have very limited land, and so you have a lot of people in a very tight space. So here you have a lot of land and not a lot of people, mm -hmm. so there's lots of areas in the country that are not inhabited, and so uh, the wind turbines would be a good location to put them in those areas. Right. Um, and, and we obviously have had gotten, we've gotten a lot of um, support by the business community, by Bell Trade, mm -hmm. from Nerico, Michael Singh and those kind of people, um, and from the government, obviously, um, and some of the contractors we've been meeting with, they're very excited about the project as well, and the public's very supportive. I mean, it's a green energy project, you know. It, yeah, there's, it'll there's big areas in Belize that, that, that still, you know, are, are, are completely 
empty where, where you don't gonna be in an eyesore like you say mm. for, for a lot of people yeah, and yeah the, there's the mount, mountain areas yeah, course all areas that there's very big open spaces where you can still do those, those, those kind of big projects here while you know in Belgium it's a different story right yeah, we don't have a lot of space over there <laughs> but what was really amazing during that week that um, all the people are very open to the project and that it's also very very important to make it a success when the whole community really uh, cares about the project mm -hmm. that's really important I think people are open yeah, for the project to a lot of stakeholders at different levels like also we have um, some people from the environmental um, in, in, in on our team you know that are envirom environmentally active in Belize and also there you know we see a lot of support we're trying to be involving every everybody and so far we must say you know there's there's Everybody looks, you know, and, and, and tries to make sure. But that's mm -hmm. also why we try to educate the people to make sure that the right information is out there. What communities have you been scouting? I hear you mentioned Corozal and earlier a bit of the mountains, which I'm assuming is Cayo. Are those the, the prime locations at this point? It's too yeah. early to too give an yeah. exact location um, because, it, um, like we said, there's a lot of factors to take into account. Mm -hmm. Uh, the first thing what we did um, to scout the areas is, is, is looking at, well, we researched all the data we could find. We, we looked, we've tried to find all the old towers, every amateur little weather station at any resort, um, any amateur radio station that has a little wind turbine on the roof, trying mm -hmm. to get all the data. So that was the first selection. Um, and then all the whole technical selection with BL on areas. And the whole mountain area and the whole Corozal area are promising, but you know they're big, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, so we we're, we're, we're have to get more in detail now, and that's what we're doing in the next days, uh, making some decisions on where we're going to do the final, final investigations. And we've final been looking. We've been looking at the whole country. Okay. Uh, the last week with the engineering team being here and Stefan and Haroon being here, we've chartered many airplanes, mm -hmm. spent many times flying around the country and looking at different sites, uh, doing, doing some um, quick wind data studies. And, uh, you know, everybody talked about uh, Mountain Pine Ridge and that area, and of course there's a lot of wind up there, but Corzal, Southern Belize, Ambergris, Quitos, you know, the whole country is very promising, and we're yeah. trying to find the locations where the wind is, is, is optimal, but also where access is available, where there's not as much impact on, you know, on, on the communities. Mm -hmm. So there, there's a lot of different places to go to. And, and accessibility is key, if you yeah. talk about the mountains. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's hard to get up there. Yeah, yeah and also the, the long lines, like you know, along anywhere in the Corridor area, if you're 40 miles away from, from a major yeah. you know, power line, that, that's a that's big expensive. investment. Yeah. Then, uh, yeah, definitely. Now, now, that's a part of the, the thing that I wanted to ask about, the technology itself, because obviously we're not dealing with just putting up a, a windmill like you see. In, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to remember the Spanish... Uh, that would be nice. Uh, <laughs> little story, but uh, I can't remember the name right now. But um, it's not a, a simple little windmill, it's no. modern technology. Yeah. So how does that impact? Um, because. You mentioned very early on some figures that yeah. had me go wow <laughs> you know because 12 million, million. the first phase is US. yeah to, because you don't think Belize. about that kind of money so what kind of technology are are we looking at um, in fact um, high technology there's a lot of software in it um, especially here we have some extra problems hurricanes so we need to cope all those problems mm -hmm. uh, accessibility can be quite a problem because uh, there are very heavy cranes to put those windmills on location. So there are some extra problems uh, we have to cope with, but we can handle it at the end. And especially, that's what uh, Frick already mentioned, uh, at the end of the day, uh, the lower our investment cost is, the better the price you can offer. So uh, it's not a big deal to, to, to put a windmill anywhere, on any location. But uh, you have to find a good location because uh, at the end of the day, it's the end consumer who, who pays, in fact, your investment. So we try to be as cost effective, effective uh, as possible. Yeah. That's, in fact, the main goal and the main diffi difficulty in such a project. And these turbines, they've, 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 they're so advanced now. They advance all the time, just like solar power and, and other renewable energies. And you know, these turbines, these towers can be uh, 200 feet tall, 250 feet tall. 
and they generate a lot of energy. Yeah, the circle, the diameter of the whole blade circle could be up to uh, you know 180 feet. Yeah, so they're huge. We need a lot yeah. of space, but the space is available, and that's yeah. one of the important things here yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. We calculated the other day, the engineers did, w uh, based on the consumption of the average consumer in Belize, I think one turbine could, um, could produce enough energy for thousands of homes, mm -hmm. like 6,000 homes for one, for one turbine.